UCLA football coaches think Ethan Garbers has the new playbook mastered. The Rams' offensive line remains in flux. ruh -roh. And not only is Easton Stick staying with the Chargers, the coaches will change the playbook for him. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. And so it's August 30th, 2024. Just loving the day here in the Sanctum Sanctorum of LA Sports. Yesterday, last night, I posted a USC football preview for 2024. If you want a deep dive into what the Trojans defense should look like, which is their best shot to get the National College football playoffs, take a look. We also added multiple new subscribers to the Angelino Familia yesterday. Thank you for getting in on the ground floor. And if you like being in the know about LA Sports, click and click the like button. Click and click the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. Now, before we go through the news and notes, a look at the scoreboard. Dodgers 6, Baltimore 3. The Dodgers lead in the West increases to 4. Chris Taylor and Mookie Betts each score a run, drive in another. Meanwhile, today, the Dodgers are at Arizona at 640. Clayton Kershaw is 2-2 two two with a 3.72 ERA. Zach Gallen is 8, I'm sorry, 10-6 with a 3.65 ERA. And now let's get to the news. I mentioned uh, earlier that we posted a USC preview. We're going to post one for UCLA football tonight. And as the season opener in Hawaii nears, frankly, tomorrow, new offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy told the Bruin Report that quarterback Ethan Garbers is ready to handle the job solo. Now, you might recall last season, nobody got to handle the job solo. Chip Kelly tried to split the baby into three portions, and the result on the field honestly looked as gross as a dissected baby. Truth is truth. But now the players are saying the enemy's playbook is deeper than Plato's Republic. So Garber's staying with the program and now Garber's knowing what the program is through the playbook has to help. Said the enemy, quote, one thing that you learn when you're in this position, yes, you don't want to handcuff those guys. You want to give them freedom if you feel like they can handle it, but with that comes a great deal of responsibility. So Ethan right now seems to be at a stage where he can handle it, and we'll give him the keys. You know, every now and then we might take him away, but at the end of the day, he's doing a good job right now of handling that. And we've got to continue to grow with him because when it's all said and done with, if he can handle it, it just helps us even more to become better offensively, quote, unquote. Now look, the translation is this, because it's a real wordy quote, much like the enemy's playbook, I might add. The translation is the Hawaii game is a test to see how much Garbers and the UCLA offensive unit know. We go much more deeper into why this is an issue or a potential issue for the Bruins in the uh, preview that we'll be posting tonight. Meanwhile, also for UCLA, there was a slight surprise on the depth chart. The LA Times noted that transfer Rico Flores Jr. was listed as the top slot receiver over the team's best receiver from last year, Logan Loya. Now, Deshaun Foster told the scribes not to read too much into that. Loya will be rotating in for all three receivers and he will get his shots to uh, catch the ball then. But yeah, changes in UCLA not just in terms of offensive philosophy, but who's actually going to be the starters in that new offensive philosophy. The Rams offensive line plans are still in flux going into the season opener with Detroit. So um, that's distressing. You remember how Sean McVay was saying the plan was for Steve Avila to play center and then the big free agent, Jonah Jackson, was going to play left guard? Nope. Now Jackson is apparently getting a long look at center with Avila going back to left guard. This is after we've been told for months that, you know, Avila, well, golly, he 
He played center in college, and so this is just a natural move. Wow, he is picking it up oh so quickly. Wrong, wrong. Now they're claiming it's cross training. They're claiming it's cross training, cross training. You know, like going from free weights to cardio to a Zumba class. It's all cross training. But uh, then they added, eh, you know, uh, you might see Jackson at center in the opener, huh? Coach, love you to death, really do. That's not cross training. That's crossing up your story. There's a difference. This is a presidential election year. We're used to flip-flopping. It's okay, just admit it. Also on the Rams offensive line, McVay said he won't know if Rob Havenstein will be ready to practice or for that matter, play in the season opener. McVay said, quote, I won't know that until the next couple of days, unquote. Also, a USA Today website that covers the Rams asked Matthew Stafford about how he grew to trust Puka Nakua so quickly. One of the reasons that Nakua rewrote the rookie receiving record book is because Stafford just trusted him just like that. So Stafford said, quote, it didn't really start in training camp. It started the second he got drafted here and was in OTAs. I spent a bunch of time in OTAs working with him. Spent time in between OTAs and training camp throwing to him. Spent a bunch of time during training camp. Just reps and his understanding of the game comes really natural to him. So kind of let those guys go out there and play. You give those guys coaching points either in training camp or during the week, whatever it is, and those guys soak it up and really go out there and try to perfect their craft and go out there and play and have fun, unquote. Meanwhile, over with the Chargers, at this point, Easton Stick, who had a disastrous preseason, still on the Charger roster. We don't know how long he'll be the primary backup to Justin Herbert, as opposed to, say, Taylor Heineke, who was recently traded for. What we do know is the Chargers coaching staff admits there's only one Justin Herbert, so the playbook will have to change whenever the other guys go under center. Quote from uh, Jim Harbaugh, they can't try to replicate Justin and what he does from every way. He's unreplicable. <laughs> Side note, thanks coach for the invented word, unreplicable. Anyway, back to the quote. Anybody that's in that same quarterback room with him You've got to get out of your mind what he can and does do and concentrate on doing your game, unquote. Now, Harbaugh told the LA Times that it reminded him of coaching the 49ers because he had Alex Smith and Colin Kaepernick. They both obviously had directly opposing skill sets. Harbaugh added that maybe the Bolts coaching staff hampered Stick in the preseason, quote, by coaching him the same way as Justin Herbert, unquote. Do you think that's a fair assessment? It could be. But all I recall was that with an entirely different coaching staff, the Chargers lost four games with stick under center last year. So maybe it's true. Your guess is as good as mine. About a month ago, Chargers running back J.K. Dobbins was totally feeling himself, bruh saying he was one of the best backs in the league, even though there was only one metric to potentially back up that claim, yards per carry. But that's not enough. I mean, dude, you can get one carry, run it 98 yards, your hamstring bursts into flames, you face plant on the one yard line, and then you're in, your career is over. Okay, if you put Dobbins' logic to that, you're the greatest of all time, right? But I will say this, at least Dobbins is now expressing a level of humility. Oh, he still thinks he's this great back, don't get me wrong, but he's acknowledging the offensive line is at least going to play a role. Quote, those guys are beasts. When you first put the O-line together and then you put the running backs with it, it takes chemistry. The offense last year was nothing like the offense we have this year. 
I'm trying to get chemistry with them and we're making sure we see it the same way. I think everybody's seeing it the same way. We have our chemistry, which is a beautiful thing because it's going to keep getting better and better and better. You're going to be like, dang, this is different, unquote. Also with the Chargers veteran safety, Tony Jefferson's comeback from retirement isn't dead, but somebody needs to stand by with the paddles. The Chargers released him Thursday, but he apparently will stay on the practice squad. He retired in 2023, spent last year as a scout with Baltimore before trying this comeback. If he does wind up playing on the Chargers, they would be his fifth team. Now the move to the practice squad was probably necessary because the Bolts traded for Tennessee defensive back Elijah Molden. Molden's not bad. He was a third round pick in 2021. He started 17 games since then. 142 tackles, couple of picks, both of those returned for touchdowns. So that's a decent depth option. The Chargers also added a running back who was cut by Tennessee, Hassan Haskins, who played under Jim Harbaugh over in Michigan. You know, they, they always say it pays to never burn bridges professionally. Here's why. Haskins didn't do squat over in Tennessee. He was injured as a rookie, then he goes on injured reserve, and then last year gets arrested in a domestic violence case before the Titans said, out of hell with this. Now, this is not to say Haskins is coming here to be the lead back. It is to say that if you get cut because you're getting injured and then you're getting charged with aggravated assault, your next job is coming from a friend of yours, not from the game film, damn sure not from LinkedIn. We spend a lot of time chatting up Dodger injuries. Too much time. You know, who's getting their elbow filleted like a tenderloin over at Ruth Chris Steakhouse? Who's going to rehab more times than Lindsay Lohan? Will we have a new president by the time this pitcher comes back? All kinds of things that we keep talking about. But one of the things that we overlooked in Wednesday's victory over Baltimore was Walker Bueller. Was it good enough to keep him in the rotation when Tyler Glasnow or Yoshinobu Yamamoto returned? I have no idea. I tend to doubt it. Here's the thing. Baltimore is a damn good baseball team. It is true that Bueller allowed four runs in four and two-thirds innings, but only two of them were earned. This was the best start of the year for Bueller, according to Dave Roberts. Quote, this is the first night I've seen the delivery, the tempo synced up, the ball was coming out really well. He's worked his tail off with our pitching guys, with our strength and conditioning guys, performance guys to get his body into a position to throw the baseball the way he threw tonight. The life of the ball, the fastball missing bats, the direction good. He was using his body the right way. Gosh, we haven't seen that in quite some time. And with that, you see the confidence, unquote. Maybe it has earned him another start. Maybe. The Hockey News released a list of its top 50 NHL players without one king on the list. Not Andre Kopitar, not Drew Doughty, not Kevin Fiala or Adrian Kempe. And to be honest with you, I don't think I have much of a problem with that. Think of the names that you would argue for. Kopitar is 37. Dowdy is 34. I mean, for Pete's sakes, since the night Drew Dowdy was drafted, I have lived in six cities. That is a long bleep in time. So I would say, look, in order to win in any sport, to be considered a championship contender, you have to have at least one elite player. Wouldn't you say? I'm not going to sit there and tell you that the Kings are going to suck. But if you don't think the Kings are going to make this big leap this season either, I hear you. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Talk to me about UCLA football and if Ethan Garbers is ready to take that job. What about the Rams offensive line? And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos, 
We're talking LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a key and Corte El Queso production. Take care.